All right, everybody, I've got a couple minutes before I'm supposed to start. Um, but I wanted to kind of go through an announcement real quick. So, um, so I'm Steve Mills. I'm technical lead at Facebook, but I also have been leading the Rack and Power project for the last five years. Um, Caleb here is my, uh, my co-lead. Uh, however, recently I've been uh, elected to go to the incubation committee for OCP. So I'll be transitioning over to that role. And uh, um, so recently, uh, Hamid Kihani has uh, won the election to be the new project lead. So we just kind of wanted to introduce him real quick um, so everybody could kind of see his face. Um, so they, they know who to go to um, when they have any questions at all about the Rack and Power project. So um, I don't know if you want to just say, just introduce yourself just real quick to everybody. Yeah. Sure. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Hamid. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for voting and supporting uh, OCP. Uh, for you, that help. Uh, I mean, what you hope you support the OCP. So I'm g glad I I would be sub uh, serving on this role. And uh, Steve is very close to me, he's sitting very close, so he would support me as well going forward. Yeah, I'm not going far. He's not. He's not going to hide. So. <laughs> so. Thanks, we just want to introduce the new project lead. Um, so I'm gonna go through a quick uh, update to the OpenRack V3 frame. Um, once I'm done, uh, Hamid will be going through the, the power architecture update. So to begin with, this, so here's kind of the areas I'm gonna cover. So to begin with, it's why OpenRack V3. I'll go through some of the new features that we'll be introducing into the V3 frame. Um, how we are engaging with the larger OCP community, and finally, what we are, are working on next. So to begin with, let's talk about why OpenRack v3. So as you've heard both today as well as, some, uh, as, well as yesterday, um, a lot of the technologies that we've been uh, getting a lot of benefits from over the last uh, several decades are kind of getting close to the end of uh, the growth rate that we've seen. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult as we go forward. There'll still be gains in the technologies that we rely on, but they're going to be uh, increasingly more expensive because uh, this is an area that is uh, kind of new, new frontier. So as the price of making those gains goes up and the risk goes up, one way to manage that is to share that risk multiple uh, companies, right? Everybody can invest um, together. So that's kind of uh, one of the themes around OpenRack v3 is kind of help enable that collaboration as a foundational platform that we can all use. So when Facebook uh, developed the v1, version of OpenRack and the V2 that was very Facebook specific. The features were focused entirely on what Facebook needs. But now as we go forward, the goal for V3 is to engage very early with the community um, as we're doing right now in an effort to kind of build out the feature sets so that we'll have a platform that hopefully enables a wide variety of the OCP community to collaborate on a single platform by adding the features that all those companies need into the base architecture. So to begin with, in order to kind of enable that uh, adoption across OCP, right, we're working to add features so we'll have that common frame that can be easily adapted by the community members. So previously, there's just a lot of features that uh, we didn't have in OpenRack v2 that made it very difficult for other companies to adopt the platform. So we're hoping to get rid of a lot of that. For this round, we're developing a very flexible power architecture that can support anywhere from 15 to 33 kilowatts. And then we'll also provide a platform where we can take all of the great work that we're doing in the advanced cooling solutions uh, projects within open rack and incorporate those into this, this architecture. So we'll have a platform that can, that can enable all that. 
So what is new for OpenRack v3? So these are new features that are being driven by the community, not, not entirely just by Facebook. So to begin with, the vertical spacing. So on v2, we had a 48 millimeter spacing um, vertically for each of the uh, IT gear. So we'll also be able to support the traditional EIA RU vertical spacing, which is 44.45 millimeters. So if you want, if you still have gear where you have the density in our using, we're going to port that into open rack. So you can have the advantages of open rack and still maintain your rack level density. Um, you'll be able to do that now. So this is a feature that was requested both uh, from Baidu and Microsoft that we add this in. As a result of that, the height of the rack is going to be increasing a little bit. We'll be adding three OU um, and it'll support uh, 48 uh, traditional EIA RU units. Uh, the bus bar voltage for V3 will be going from 12 volt to 48 volt. Um, so we're not planning on developing any 12 volt uh, power shelves around uh, V3. We had two different power zones um, in OpenRack V2. So there's one on the bottom, one on the top. So now we'll have a complete uh, single bus bar that goes all the way from top to bottom for V3. We had two different power shelves, well, not really different, but there is one power shelf for each power zone that were rate about 6.2 kilowatts. For the new one, we will be going to a single one U shelf that will provide up to 15 kilowatts with a separate BBU uh, enclosure that's uh, optional. So if you don't want that feature or if you want to build out that feature, you can uh, mix and match as you need. One of the limitations we had on the power shelf for V2 is that they were bolted into very specific locations within the rack, which made it kind of difficult to build different types of configurations. So for V3, that's going to be connectorized. You'll be able to put the power shelf anywhere you would like inside the uh, rack frame. So that'll give you a lot of flexibility on how you choose to build out your, your rack level configurations. I can show you a little bit more detail about that later. So liquid cooling manifold, right? So again, this is uh, one of the features I was telling you before um, that we're gonna be adding in from the ACS. So these are optional features that are being baked into the larger architecture that you can choose to um, use or, or not, depending upon how you wanna configure the rack. Um, the rear door heat exchanger is also coming from uh, the Advanced Cooling Solutions Group. We're adding in support for co-location so this is not a feature that Facebook needs, but it's uh, very valuable for other members of the community. So these are things like uh, security doors for the front and back, as well as panels on the sides so that you can prevent um, access to uh, the IT gear inside. Uh, and so we've also added in a rear hot plug data fabric. Um, so there's examples of that if anybody's been on the Facebook booth. Um, so this is also an optional feature that we are building into the infrastructure, reserving space for us so that as um, this feature becomes more and more necessary, we'll already have that uh, available as members of the community need to go uh, make use of that. So I'm going to go through some, uh, a little bit more detail on some of the features I just went through. So this is just kind of a, a screenshot of the, the rack itself. If I kind of zoom in here, this is the, the sides. So the front one's here on the left, the rear one's there on the right. So there's two sets of uh, front one is essentially a set of holes for uh, open U. And then there's another set in the back that we will be using for the EIA rails. So what you can do is, uh, depending upon which set you want, you can just populate these with some, some rails for the IT gear to sit on. Um, this also allows you to kind of mix and match. You can have a rack that's half open you and half uh, uh, EIA for some reason you wanted to do that. So this is just an example of what uh, the L bracket that the IT gear would sit on. So it just snaps into the, uh, the uh, rack frame. So you just kind of build these up as you go. So if you have one U gear, two U gear, four U gear, you can just populate these as you need wherever. So in V2 rack, where we had a hard stop that was uh, baked into the rear frame of the rack, 
um, but because now that we're supporting both RUs and OUs, we've taken that hard stop in the back and added it into the IT bracket. Um, what this does is it allows it to translate um, wherever the IT gear is, you get one of these. This will also provide, because of the little hole that we've got in the back, you can put a tab on your IT gear that goes into that slot and it'll provide vertical control as well during uh, uh, shock or vibration. So one of the other features I was talking about is the fact that you could, we have now a connectorized power shelf. So that's a 1U, kind of a back view of the 1U power shelf. And you can see the, the connector right here that we're developing. So this will be a 500 amp, 48 volt DC interconnect that'll plug directly into the bus bar. So now you can, you know, it, it'll be more efficient the closer you can get this to the middle of your rack. But if you want to, because it's 48 volt, you can essentially play, play that anywhere is convenient inside the rack. There's a little action shot there, but actually plug it into the bus bar. So we're also working on this uh, green interconnect right here. So we have uh, a group that's working on that. This is the uh, kind of a, a universal uh, A, not necessarily AC, but it's the power input connector to the power shelf. So this is uh, uh, similar to the implementation that Microsoft has with seven wires. So we're just trying to put this into a smaller form factor that fits into a one U shelf. But conceptually, it's, it's uh, very similar. So let's look at how we're kind of engaging with the community with uh, all these different groups. So to begin with, the 48 volt bus bar. So this was already part of the, the open compute open rack 2.0 specification. So this is a larger specification that controls all versions of open racks. So this already exists. We're not having to make any change to this. Um, that's why we already have some of these connectors that are already available on the market because this specification uh, was uh, approved like two years ago or something like that. We have the open rack frame. So there's a JDA group that's working on the frame design. And we also have another uh, working group uh, well, sorry, so we'll, we'll be developing or you know, working to create another working group uh, to be working on the hot plug liquid manifold as well as the uh, hot plug dripless valves that go in the back. Um, so we're just now in the process of kicking this off um, and we'll be working very closely with the uh, kind of existing uh, UQ uh, quick connect. So you. QD, yeah, um, group to uh, enable this as we go forward. Um, so let's kind of look at some of the power stuff that we've got going on. So we've got one group that's going to be working on uh, the, the power shelf, the rectifiers themselves, the SMC, and then um, I will some additional invitations for uh, suppliers that want to work on the 48 volt output connector. So we, we had a meeting on this um, in June at the, our last face-to-face -face workshop where we started working on this specification, but uh, we'll start uh, finalizing. We have another working group on the uh, universal input connector. So, uh, so we've got quite a few different work groups that are all working kind of in parallel to develop uh, one integrated large solution for the, the community. All right, so what is next? So we will be continuing the work that we're doing on each of these uh, work streams. So our goal is to have some preliminary specifications available uh, by the end of the year with the hopes that sometime earlier next year we'll start to have uh, prototypes coming out for uh, initial testing early next year. And then uh, we'll probably leave those specifications uh, open for a while as we continue to build uh, prototypes so we can continue to update those specifications throughout the, uh, throughout the rest of next year. So you'll start to see at least the infrastructure coming out uh, in next year's time frame with all, with all these components. Um, so we just like uh, everybody to kind of get involved. 
there's links to join the Rec and Power group. Um, and so if, there's, see, if you see any of those working groups that you're interested in joining, we would uh, love to have you uh, participate. So thanks a lot, everybody.